guys, what's happening? So, spent the last couple days designing this uh, new extruder system for the uh, Celeritas. Um, if you're not familiar with my channel, I made another high, super high speed printer called the Celeritas. But what's funny is uh, I had a person comment on one of the videos that said, if you're going to be printing at that speed, you're definitely going to need to have an extruder that can piss out filament. So I'm hoping I designed a new extruder system that could piss out some filament. All right, so th I'm calling this thing called it's called called the Botabus Maximus, and I'll show you some of the unique characteristics of this uh, extruder system um, that's going to actually allow me to blow out some filament. But uh, yeah, so this would work. This is I mean I kind of designed this for the Celeritas, but this should work with any sort of like high performance Core XY, Cross XY printer. Um, yeah, mouse just a 2020 rail, 2040 rail, and uh, but the unique thing is these large gears. So it runs the same large gears as like an HGX LGX extruder, um, but it actually runs a really massive NEMA 17 motor. So I made this space big enough for a 60 millimeters, uh, a big massive 60 millimeter NEMA 17. Um, but I'm probably going to start off with a 48 millimeter. Uh, just because I don't have dr a driver capable of actually putting out the amperage to really blow up a 60 millimeter, uh, but let me show you the gears, and I'll, I'll, I'll also walk you through on the the installation of it. So I bought some gears on AliExpress, and I bought the new. Uh, they're called large gears. So it's a, consider a large gear extruder. Um, and what gave me the idea is I'm already running one of these, these XGX Lite on the Orca printer. Um, but then I saw, I was originally going to design it for these larger gears, and I'll show you the difference. Um, you know, uh, and then I saw these right here, like, uh, this is not the order I bought it at, but um, see these new gears? They actually have ball bearings here. Oops, open that up. So there's ball bearings, so instead of actually like a, like a needle bearing, uh, there's ball bearings in here. And also unique here is that these things are helical cut. So that should hopefully solve the issue with the uneven extruding. With the like, I'm currently running like a Bontech BMG style uh, extruder. Um, so these are these gears are a different size than these uh, the, the traditional version one gears, I guess I call them. Um, the traditional one one gears, I guess, right here. Um, see how these this gear right here is larger, and there's this there's a full size gear here. So let me go back to the other one. So this gear is shorter. I'm trying to find a picture of it. Um, this, see this right here? Go ahead and click on it. So this is shorter. I don't know why I won't stay on there, but this is shorter right here. The gear doesn't extend all the way out to here, so. So the extruder is a combination of a, a bond BMG style gear system and a this larger gear system. So I'm running the drive gear, the NEMA 17 drive gear. I'm using a Bontech, uh, the, the BMG style gears. And I'll show that to you once I get out to my workbench. So running the all right, now that I've showed you what I'm using in the gear wise, yeah, I just I couldn't find the gears like the smaller gears yet, and I didn't really want to recreate them all. But here's an XJ extruder, and this actually has the larger gears right here, the width here. But I can't copy and paste these into my model because these are different. So um, let me show you the how it's constructed, and then I'll show you some of the unique features. So uh, that's the mount. So you can kind of see the different things. That, that's a pivot right there. I can turn the pivot off. But, yeah, it took me a lot of tries and shots, and I'll show you all my, my fails, to get all these things lined up correctly. You know, all the position of the filament here and the heights and differences of the of the gears, um, you know, locking mechanisms and just all the alignment everywhere, you know. And then make sure this one off, take the lever off. And that is the the bottom. So same thing. Everything aligned, everything works. Everything is it fits through the film it goes through smoothly. I haven't used it yet, so I'm gonna fire it up. So I think one of the things I need also need to figure out is the rotational distance. Um, because it's it's what's weird is it's running a um, since it's running a um, a BMG style gear that connects the motor, um, it's the same tooth count and diameter as the bond jack. So I just need to count the gears. I believe I just need to count the gears here. But I might have to factor this gear in too, but I'll figure that all out. Um, but let me show you back to some of the unique stuff. So one of the issues I always have with all these extruders 
you know, it's the Bontech, uh LGX. They don't show you the filament path. I mean, I want to see the filament going through the gears. I want to see the filament path. Also, so when I'm feeding new filament through, I can see if I'm feeding it through the hole right. So every extruder system I've seen so far, I mean, that I've, I mean, I haven't seen them all, but I've seen a lot of them. Um, they don't show you the, the, the filament going through. And that's what I want to see. I mean, some of the older ones, like the old, like, school, like, CR-10, the, you know, single extruder. Yeah, you can see that. But, I mean, I want, a, like, a dual drive. Um, because I'm going to be trying to spit out so much filament. I'm mean, going to need a way to be able to seriously grab this filament. And that's why, um, you know, when I designed this hot, I thought, I want to use something with the large gears. But I don't want to be restricted to a NEMA 14 motor, this little round motor. You know, I want to be able to have a, enough motor and, and power to blow this filament through. Like, I want to be able to lift the hot end off the bed. That's how much film I want to be able to blow through this thing. Plus, I mean, the speed that I'm going to throw the, the saleritas at, I mean, I'm going to need to be able to seriously blow some filament through this thing. So I'm probably going to have to design a new hot end, too. Um, and I've actually done, like, the Air Express hot end. I've kind of work on that. But i got to machine it, so... Um, let me go back here. So another unique thing too is getting the angle right on the Bowden. Um, I'll, I mean, I'll show all this, all, all this to you when I get out to the test bench, but see, that's like a side glass. So the, you'll see the two gears right here, but I can see the filament path going through between the gears. I can see if the filament is binding or slipping or cutting. You know, I can see if the filament's actually going through and not slipping. I can see if the gear's stopped up, you know. Um, but because I'm able to run such a big, massive motor back here, it shouldn't matter. I mean, I'll probably end up cutting through the filament before I, you know, actually end up stopping the motor. Um, another unique feature about this is... Are these little pivot mounts. So a t traditional, typical, like, NEMA 17 Bo Bowden setup, right? You basically have, like, a f a four different positions in 90-degree 90, 90 increments, right? So I wanted to basically add this, and it pivots around. It, it, you can actually pivot to, you know, like, 45-degree angles, all different kinds of angles. So this thing will pivot around. I don't know if this is even making sense. So you have three screws, and they line up with different notches. These will all, these will all be, like, little brass inserts. And I'll show you that. And but this whole thing can just spin around. So if as I'm trying to dial on the angle, like there's there's a what you don't want is a super long Bowden tube. You know, the longer the Bowden tube is, the more slack you have to pick up. You know, when, in retraction. Um, but you also it, it creates. I mean, it, it it's it creates resistance too as well. You know, so you want a short 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 shortest Bowden tube you can possibly get. Um, but yeah, this this will pit. This, I, I've already tested it. Actually, it works. But it just it, this whole thing can pivot to different positions. And then you can also mount the extruder up up this way. You can mount this way, that way, up, down, whatever. This whole thing spins around all these different directions. So however your printer is, you can go this way, spin in all different directions. Um, like I said, I can mount this to my side and go. I mean, like I said, I, I wanted a lot of versatility. How it was. In case I don't want to mount in this direction, I can move it to the side. It just it pivots in all directions. Um, all right, so I'm pretty much done printing this out. I'm kind of printing out like a, this is the Orca printer right here. I'm, I'm kind of doing like a, I keep on making small revisions, but. Um, all right, so here is a printer that's going to go on. If you're new to this channel, this is uh, called the Celeritas. It's pronounced, I mean, it depends on where you come from. It could be the Caleritas if you're Italian, Celeritas, Celeritas. Um, but yeah, that's the BMG extruder here I'm currently running. And see the angle? I mean, it kind of gave me the idea was I could pivot the angle and the, to get the right perfect angle. I think I'm going to go 45 degree angle up. So I think 45 will put a little bit less stress on the Bowden tube. But uh, here is that part that it was printing out just now. If you're, familiar, if you're not use this or you've never seen the orca it's it levels the bed in four directions all right well we can't get that off with one hand and right, here it is so you can see the filament path all right and then it pivots 
So this is what I was trying to describe you. I can pivot the thing in all different angles. I have three screws. I can pivot depending on where I want, you know, I can here, here. Just has to line up with one of these screws here. So I got uh, just ones like these M10 pneumatic inserts. Just screws in. It's actually threaded already for M10 model into it. Actually, the, for some, well, at least my printer, the threading actually works pretty good. All right, got that going. All right, so let me show you. I gotta pull that out to get it in there. Um, yeah, I changed or changed the the pivot mount here. I moved it back because it was interfering with that. That's what you saw me printing out. Gotta get that going. I'm gonna separate this so you can see it. All right, so there it is internally. So the cool thing about this one is it's running the ball bearings versus the needle bearings. Yeah, I am going to give up a little bit of, uh, what's it called, some uh, some tooth rigidity, I guess larger teeth. Um, but actually, I, I was trying to run the HGX with the larger teeth. But I guess I'm willing to give that up for the helical gears. You know, I think it's worth it for the helical gear. The helical gear will allow it to, uh, it, with the, when it, the straight cut gears, it can create like uneven... Uh, extruding. But yeah, here is the uh, Bontech uh, or BMG style gear that's going to go on the motor. Um, here's a 16 millimeter motor. Uh, like I said, I'm probably going to run in 48. That just fits in there like that. You know, so you can fit a massive motor in there, you know. There's there's no motor restrictions on the size of what you can do with that thing. So, um, put that in there. Just threads in with the four, four screws here, but this is pretty. Uh, I mean, pretty self-explanatory. So it took me hours and failed shots of getting this, um, getting all these things to line up, you know, perfectly with the filling path and just you know being able. To, I'm trying to make it as rigid as possible. Like I said, I'm gonna be able to put some serious force behind this with that big motor. Um, I, I'm assuming that I'll probably end up breaking the gears or st stripping filament out first. I mean, kind of messing around with the names. <laughs> um, yeah, this one, Celeritas or Celeritas, is uh, means Latin or it means speed in Latin. And then uh, yeah, the Bowden tube, Bowdenus Maximus, the Bowden tube. Um, yeah, obviously it's not direct drive. So this is the other one I was talking about here. This is the HX Light, and it actually has the larger gears here. Um, so actually, if, if, well, I mean, I, I guess I could buy another set of gears, and I'll make one based on these two, maybe. I mean, I'd have to change the distances, but I mean, I really have all the all the positioning is correct. I just have to measure or change the diameters. Okay, so here's um, the Celeris extruder. So the Celeris was just basically a Bontech. I mean, really, all I did was just the mount, the way so I can actually mount this uh, 40 millimeter motor. Like I said, um, I'm running a 22.9 driver, so. I mean, I'm not going to even probably even overload. I'm running, I'm running a one, 1 amp. So, I mean, I could go up to like a 1.4 amp max. But this should be able to handle about 2 amps, this motor. So, uh, I definitely would overheat my driver before I overheat this motor. I forgot, I think, so. to mention why the large gear is so much better than the small gear. So, that's a BMG a gear right there. But look at the diameter of the gear. So, that's the, actually, that's the, that's, where the, that's the grabbing right there. And then look at, so you actually, you basically have more surface contact. So that's the difference. You have a, way more, a lot more surface contact to grab the filament because it's a, it's a larger circle. So you're actually engaging more teeth, more threaded teeth. So earlier what I was saying about gears is the bond tech is a lot easier to figure out because you basically have two gears, right? You have this gear and that gear, right? Whereas with this one, you have this gear that actually is exactly the same as it threads, even the tooth count's exactly the same here. Um, so you have th this gear driving this gear, and then I'm driving this gear on the outside. So these two gears, th this extruder gear and this gear should cancel each other out, right? But then you have to factor in this gear right here, threading this thing right here. So, I mean, I don't know, I have to figure it out, I don't think, think about it. Yeah, they yeah. definitely vary in shaft lengths here. So that's the one that I took out of the Bontech one. This is a new uh, stepper line that I use for the access, which I'll probably end up using. But when I designed this thing, I designed it for the longer shaft, which is more standard. So it's not designed on one of the shorter shaft. Even though you can, actually, I can make this work by bringing this thing out, you know, to get to the length. But it's basically right at the very edge of this thing right here. 
So I wanted to have the gear, it, you'll see, but I wanted, I wanted the gear to kind of right at the very end of this so to get as much, you don't want too much stick out because if you have too much stick out then it basically puts more, um, more um, tension on the shaft. You know, in the next revision, I could probably make this part a little bit shorter. I could probably make this a couple of millimeters shorter here. Maybe take off like three millimeters. That way I can get right to the very end of the shaft. Or if you had a short shaft, but like I said, most motors come with this long shaft, so I had to bring this out a few millimeters past the edge. My goal is I wanted to have it at the very edge, just like that right there. All right, so we need some 15 millimeter beveled shafts. Um, bevel M3s to get it on there. It really depends on how, I mean obviously the longer the better, but it really depends on how how deep they have these things threaded. Some of these things I've seen them threaded four millimeters. I guess it really depends on the size of the motor. Like here how, how much they have it threaded. Like these ones are threaded pretty deep. I guess the usually the bigger the motor maybe it might be threaded deeper. So obviously if you could do it if you could get like a 20 millimeter screw in there, you know that would definitely be better. You'd have more grabbing force but all right, there it is, guys. Yeah, I can get this over here in the light. Yeah, so you can see it better. All right, there it is. Got the compass on there. So the Bowden tube, I also have it done so the Bowden tube can go all the way in there. And there's a slot in there, right? So it actually will help it feed. So you're, you're, sometimes if you don't actually have a Bowden tube that goes all the way in, it will get caught up on the actual coupler right there. I mean, I could actually go on a smaller coupler too, but like the threaded inserts, but I wanted to go as strong as possible. So that'll go like that. And take a look. I can see that. Yeah, the motor is pretty strong, brand new motor, so it's you know. Alright, now I gotta figure out the rotational distance, the gearing, and get it on that printer. So actually I actually have um, because depending on how you have it, I'm probably only gonna be using the uh, two. I mean, I designed this for a 10 millimeter M4, but with the T-nut. So I'll show it to you when I put it in my printer. Let's take a look at that angle here. Um, I mean, like I said, I mean, the benefit of the Bowden, if you're not, if you're new to like 3D printers and stuff, is you don't actually have the motor and the extruder here. So you do this to reduce weight. It's not as accurate. I mean, it's definitely more accurate having a direct drive extruder, but like I said, you can't print super fast with this because it's just so heavy. So you got to reduce accelerations when you're using a direct drive. Um, so the angle, so that's why I clocked it at 45 degrees. So I'm not putting like an extreme angle on the Bowden tube, but I want to keep it as short as possible. So I originally had it at 90 degrees, like this way, and it was kind of putting some uneven stress, mainly when I went to the, this back corner. But by clocking at 45, I'm reducing a lot of the stress. If I went to if I went to this way, if I went to straight up and down, I'd actually have to extend the the Bowden tube to make it fit, you know, make it more rounded here. So I think that 45 degree angle is perfect and because, like I said, the the point where the, what I'm trying to accomplish is have the shortest Bowden tube as possible. Because the longer that Bowden tube is, the more resistance, more more retraction. Because the tube itself is not you know your your film is 1.7 mil 1.75 millimeter. And inside the tube is like two millimeter, right? So the longer this is, the more slack you're going to have in here, the more slop play, you want to call it. So I don't have the rotational distance correct yet, but I just want to see if this thing actually works. Put that in there. Hopefully you can see that in the frame. The light's not messing around too much with it. I just want to make sure everything works mechanically. I actually had to switch the motor polarity around, or the polarity, but the coils around. It was shorting out, so. Alright, so I'm trying to, so I'm trying to do the math. I'm just going to grab my 10 millimeter. I'm going to test and see what it pulls out 10 millimeter or not. And I'll get the right rotational distance. I mean, I want to be 0.1 of a millimeter. That's how accurate I want to make it. Right, here is the extruder section. So the original Bontech BMG was 7.710. Um, I got a. I mean, this actually looks. It's extremely dialed in at 9.4. I'm sure I could get it down to like 9.45 or, um, I guess I'd probably have to do the math for that, but this is really close. I mean, I'm using like my, uh, pretty accurate little scale there. And, uh, so when I tell it to command 10 millimeters, it pulls out 10 millimeters pretty much exactly. So like I said, even, you know, different filaments have different flow rates. So you always need to adjust your flow rate 
to the filament because even even filaments have different shrinkage and everything too. So um, you actually have to test the individual filament with like different calibration cubes and you know shrinkage and flow rate. So all right, let's do a test print see if this thing works. All right. Yeah, if you want to know what this printer is, it's a, a custom build printer I designed for super high speed. Let's see if this thing's extruding. Alright, looks like the offset. I could probably go maybe up. Alright, the test is just to see how much this thing's extruding. I don't get my flashlight, but I don't know if you can see that in here. Yeah, I should have pretty good retraction. I think I have like two millimeters of retraction. I did have a retraction test. What's that? So I think this is 120 millimeters a second. Not too fast. I mean, this printer can go, I don't know, this printer can probably go over 500 millimeters a second. Easily, you know. You can hear the fans kick in. Alright. Yeah, that's better. That's not too bright. That's what I was going for. Yeah, I want to be able, I wanted to be able to see the film, see what's actually happening. So I can see if it's slipping or what it's doing, you know? I don't know why other people don't make extruders like that. You know? Well, especially dual drive gear like that. I don't see a lot of dual drive where you can actually see the filament path. But to me, I think that's important. Where's your thinking hang? <laughs> it's gonna be a four minute calibration cube. Probably doesn't look great, but still got a pal in the settings. Yeah, I'm doing a 0 .0 uh, or 0 .4 with uh, pressure advance. All right, guys, cool. All right, so before I go, so I like to show you guys using my fail pile. This is really just for the young creators out there. That just subscribe to my channel. I know there's a lot of them. So um, the point of this is just to show you that you're not going to get it in the first shot. I mean, I had many, many fails before I got the spacing correct. Everything's you know set up correct. The gear, the right meshing with the gears. Um, all right, guys. Cool. Having fun. <laughs>